to talk about crankshafts. Last week we uh, showed you how to remove a sludge trap and how I do it anyway and how I recommend doing it. Today I'm going to show you how to put it back in. Now uh, there's several other things that I like to point out to people because there's a lot of uh, things on the marketplace today which may be convenient or easier to use but they're not necessarily good for you. Now when I do a crank here uh, we balance in every crank we do. Uh, this is just a practice that I've always done because they need it. Um, regardless of what anybody tells you, harmonic dynamic balancing is good. It's a good thing. Prior to balancing, of course, we, uh, in, a, in a terms of a crankshaft, we magnaflux it. Now you notice there's three different, uh, actually four different types of sludge plugs here. Um, sludge plugs are very important for balancing. Uh, the factory used a sludge plug that was 1.2 ounces. That would be this one here with the slot cut. Um, these other type of sludge plugs, you'll see the hex key um, to uh, remove them. Now this one's an awfully big uh, hex key and this one's uh, way less than an ounce. It's very, very uh, hollow and thin. Uh, this one here I'd call a medium hex plug and this one is uh, about 1.2 uh, ounces on average. Okay, um, this one, um, even though the hex is is smaller, uh, it's still tremendously lighter than a factory plug, which is 1.5 ounces. Now, this one here, even though again it has a much smaller hex, this one's thinner, and that's the reason, see, it's not as thick as a factory plug. Uh, it's quite a bit thinner than a factory plug. It shows here this one um, is uh, 412 thousandths. This one here, the thinner one with the small hex, is considerably smaller than that. It's 350, okay, 0.350. That's why it's lighter. Okay, now the fact that these three are way lighter than this one will throw your balance off left to right dramatically. They're really, I don't recommend them, they're really not good. Um, so stick with the factory one, the heavier plug, and you'll be good. The other thing about these situations that we have uh, and some of the problems that I've experienced over the years with crankshafts and the reason that I magnaflux and I do it is because I've had catastrophic failure due to no fault of my own. Uh, the reason is because there's all kinds of, uh, number one, this stuff is generally on average 50 years old. It wasn't made to last this long and we're still using it and we still expect it to perform like it was when it was new. Uh, so flywheel bolts are an issue. There are two basic styles of flywheel bolts. There's the early style uh, which is up to 1970 and then there's the later style which is up to the end of production uh, beginning in 71 uh, at some point all the way up to 1983. Um, this thread is SAE. This bolt you can see is a, a bit different style, different head, and it has a washer. The earlier one, the head's smaller, it's a Whitworth size, and it has no washer. Now the uh, two different bolts that you see here very slightly different, but they are different. Uh, most notably the threads and the length. This one's a little longer, isn't it? That's the flywheel kind of grew on the later one and that's what accounts for that. Now, flywheel bolts often when they come out of a crank, now this one would be a later flywheel bolt, is rusty. Now, because it's pitted and rusty, this bolt is junk. Don't put it back in. All right, It will break. Um, it's very important to understand that because you know a lot of these cranks are very rusty and they've been sitting around and and this bolt if this bolt shears off it's catastrophic It'll ruin your motor so don't put a, a rusty bolt back in your motor always replace it with a new one um, I like to replace these bolts irrespective uh, of their condition we always uh, magnaflux the bolts and check them, but they'll usually break off right at the last thread right here, Okay, right at the end. They'll shear off there. Now, I don't know why they shear off, but they do. It's had it happen to me. 
and I hate to see it happen to anybody else. So uh, they should be at least um, magnafluxed and checked for crack. Uh, at, at, at best, they should be replaced. Now, the uh, sludge tube, uh, I wanted to discuss a little bit more with the sludge tube. The sludge tube, after it's cleaned or replaced, is ready to be reinstalled into the flywheel. And you have to make sure that it's clean. And um, it's very, very important. Easier just to buy one, but um, you know you can clean like this one. I've cleaned the original one. There are also other features. You'll notice on this crankshaft here, for instance, in this hole. This one was fitted from the factory in the mid-60s without any washer. There's no washer here. And also, there's no chamfer on this hole. And you'll notice that this one here, again, uh, if you zoom in on this, you'll be able to see that this got quite a heavy chamfer in it. Uh, it of course, this has been cleaned, so you can see it more dramatically. There's your chamfer. Now, some of them don't have a chamfer, and some of them do. Let's, let's proceed with this. Now, to reinstall your sludge trap, obviously, you, you know, scrupulously clean the sludge trap. You insert it. I always use my finger in this manner and uh, try to kind of eyeball it and line it up as best as I can. Now, once that's in the cavity, it pops in place generally. You can feel it go in. And again, with the flashlight, you just take the flashlight. And now you can see that hole is dead center. Very, very good. Nice job. And then... We take the flywheel bolt, okay, which has been inspected and zyglowed, or magnaflux in this case because it's steel, um, and we apply the, the Loctite compound. Now, you don't get carried away with the Loctite compound, just a little bit, and let it uh, kind of uh, smear it around so it's evenly distributed. You know, you insert that in the crank, and run that in by hand. And like I said, I always like to do it with a hand wrench because I can feel it stop and I know it's at the base when it stops it just stops right like that it just stops that's it now I know I'm within like a pound or so of torque and I check my torque wrench and I make sure I have my setting right and I bring it up to here we come up to 32.533 pounds okay and that's what the factory recommended on these was 33 pounds we get the torque wrench we snug it and I'll try to get it to come to full torque at the middle of the swing. See how I do. Pretty good. Not too bad. A little early. But uh, there you have it. Now that bolt is torqued in place. 33 pounds. Sludge trap is installed. And we take the, the, the sludge plug, which is a slotted uh, OEM sludge plug. This one's a, a reproduction, but it weighs exactly the same as the original sludge plug, which is one and a half ounces. Now, this is very important. Uh, I find this to be of paramount importance. Again, with the, the 271 Loctite, smear it on there, give you 100% coverage on the threads, and offer it to the crank with a, just a regular screwdriver. And you just run this thing in, okay, until it's flush with the crank flywheel. Flush, okay. It'll want to go in further. Okay, and these tend to be on these these sludge plugs. Tend the threads tend to be a little loose, a little scary. All right, but that sludge plug is not going to come out of there, and I'm going to show you why. Okay. Now I have a a, 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 a a prick punch that I happen to like an awful lot. It's a nice sharp one. It's a good old-fashioned prick punch. Very nice. Use a medium ball peen hammer. We don't get carried away with a ball peen. And what I like to do is what the factory did. You 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 can come around here and show them. That the factory, this one, this crank has been cleaned several times. You can see all the prick punches. I've kind of deburred them. But what the factory would like to do is they run this this screw slot in, right? And this one here, see, it was like there once and it was there once. See, it gets tighter as you tighten it in there. Now, what I like to do is prick punch it down on the other side, down here, and I'll locate it with this tool just to make myself a place for the prick punch to sit so I don't, you know, overdo it. Because you don't have to overdo it. And what we're going to do is we're going to locate this in the prick punch like that. And we're basically just going to wrap it, what the British call a wrap. A wrap. A wrap like that. That's it. That is it. That is the prick punch. That's the way to go. That thing is tight now. It's not coming out of there. That does. Yep, that's got it right there. That will never come out of there. And it's clean. And this, this crank is now ready uh, to assemble the rods. 
Yeah, I wanted to thank you all for, uh, you know, hanging out with me today and maybe I hopefully, you know, imparted some information that's useful to you. And I appreciate you coming to watch me on YouTube and uh, please visit my website at uh, triumphday.com. And thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you.